quick one today because I'm way too excited to not be knitting, but I have you to thank. Those of you who did watch the last one might remember that I had decided on fives, US fives, getting a gauge of 21 stitches over 10 centimeters was the thing. Which probably would have been beautiful. Except I couldn't find my fives. My little case that I made that keeps all my needles has gotten a little floppy. It's just getting a little old. And so everything's stretching out a little bit. And so one time I went to pick up my needle case and all of the needles fell out. And I thought I got them all back. I knew the fives weren't there, but I checked the cable that I would have been using them with and I didn't see it in my cable case, so I said, okay, it, they must be somewhere else. They, they totally, they, they weren't somewhere else. So, I, I don't know where they are. They're somewhere. I've looked everywhere. I've looked under couches. I've looked, I've looked everywhere, and I have not yet found them, but they could be, like, in the bottom of a suitcase, because needles escape. It's, it's a thing that happens. I will continue my hunt slash buy another pair, but it kind of stalled me. For obvious reasons but then I'm sitting there thinking because I had been thinking that actually what if I'm making a weird assumption on the fabric difference because there was something about the fabric on fours at 22 stitches over 10 centimeters that I also liked I did it wasn't seeing to me but I was kind of thinking well what if I'm wrong what if that assumption is based on absolutely nothing and it could sing in a garment size situation. Just because it's not the most commonly used gauge for this yarn doesn't mean that it's not a good thing. So I said, screw it, I'm casting on with fours. So I am making a cardigan. I was looking at the Muscari. And in the comments, a couple of you suggested I look at the timepiece, which I did, and it's fabulous. It's a beautifully constructed garment. I'm not familiar with that designer, but it seemed to look great across all ranges. And then I, of course, have your comments that you wear it all the time and are considering making another of some of you. So, hmm. so the thing I really liked about the timepiece was, in fact, the integrated button band. Sometimes I like the look of a button band, sometimes I like it to be a little, it's a different vibe, right? It, it, it's, it's functionally not terribly different in my experience, but it, it gives you a different look. And I kind of liked where the look was. I especially liked on the timepiece that the collar, because it's an integrated button band, stood up. So I got pretty excited about that. And I did some math. And then I did some more math. And I think I figured out how to add the same kind of integrated button band with the little stand-up collar onto the mascari. Because I really liked and I really wanted to try this particular version of a saddle shoulder. Which is what the plan was. The upside of having lost the needles is that I had initially planned to do one strip and then pick up along that strip and then continue knitting it, you know, integrated into the button band integrated without thinking that when you switch direction in ribbing, you're offset by half a stitch. It's so noticeable there that no, that that's not going to work. I don't know what I was thinking. I was thinking that I was excited. Actually, that that's what I was thinking. And I wasn't stopping it and really saying, wait, what's next? Which is fine, because I, I realized it as I went to cast on with the fours. I stopped and I was like, hang on, I have made a tactical error here. This isn't going to work. I can't do that. And so I thought about doing a, a cast on in the middle and then going. But I was like, you know, what? I think that offset half a stitch, even if it's in the back of my neck, I think that's going to annoy me. I think a seam would annoy me less. So what I did was two provisional cast-ons and then knit two at the time so that I got the same length so I didn't screw that up. 
I did the math to figure out my pickup rate, which in this case was a little weird. My theory was, and it seems to have worked, so, fingers, knock, knock on wood. I thought that if I picked up at a higher ratio along the back of the neck than I should, that because there were more stitches in the collar, it would not want to lie flat, it would want to pull up. And that, that seems to have worked. My, my, my pickup ratio was totally different from one to the next. On the button band, obviously, when you're, when you're in line, th there's no picking up. You just, you're in line. And then on the saddle shoulder, so here we have my little saddle shoulder. That's where my shoulder starts to become an arm. Along this, I picked up two out of three. And then along the back, I picked up three out of four. So basically I just did a little quick math to figure out how many stitches therefore I needed on each side to get that pickup ratio. And then I did it. And I'm really excited. It seems to be working. See, seems. But when I put this on, which I can do, but not really. But when I put this on and the shoulders are where they're supposed to be, the collar stands up. Do you, do you get like this? Are you like me? Like you're a four-year-old with a, a ticket to a free candy when you, something that you try to do works out the first time? Comment below. I would love to hear your story about a success like this. Because they feel good. They feel so good. And it makes all the ones that aren't a success feel a little bit better. Because you know what happens sometimes. For me, anyway. So, this is my... Muscari slash timepiece cardigan, or will be. This is the beginnings of it. I also had to do another modification because my row gauge is almost the same. I'm off by one, so it's not that big of a deal, especially in, in short distances like this. But because I integrated the button band, it changes. Like if you were picking up, then this part would be shorter. But because I am integrating it, it's already there. I ended up ha choosing to. Maybe I didn't have to. I mean, technically, if the button band is the same width as the other one, it should have worked out. But when I got to pattern, it was it it wasn't it was like over here, and I I wanted it to actually to pass my bone, my collarbone, right? I feel like that's where I'm happy. I, that could be another bad assumption, but I'm I'm running with it. That's where my other sort of set in sleeve shoulders, which this is not, but it's like basically the same thing. The construction of this is almost identical to a set in sleeve shoulder, save for the fact that you have some stitches between. You don't have the one stitch that acts like a seam, you have some stitches between. But in a lot of other ways, it's the same. Um, at some point I'm probably going to pattern comparison because I want to, I want to like more deeply analyze the construction. But basically you're, you're just doing increases for the body, then increases for the sleeve, and then you'll do some together, and then you'll split. So thank you, those of you who commented. You put me in a new direction, and I'm very happy with where that direction is going. And that's all I got, because I want to go do some math. Be okay, so I still have to figure out, now that I am where I am, and because my gauge was different, I also am doing a different size. It, the math worked out that I would get a the amount of ease that I wanted at one size above what I'd normally knit. So I am knitting one size above what I'd normally knit, but I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. And I'm at a point where I'm about to start doing multiple kinds of increases at the same time, and I don't want to mess with the line. Like, I feel like that visual line is really important. And I don't know why, why. because it, I mean, it, it, it gives an effect. I, I'm going to stick with it. It is kind of important because uh, if it's all over the place, it just looks a little untidy or weird. So for me, that's, I'm, I'm happy to do some extra math and pay attention to that. So I'm about to do the math to see how many rows I have left, how many stitches I still have to increase and do I then want to follow the pattern exactly, or do I want to make any modifications, right? So that I get exactly the line that I want, slash 
don't have to sneak in extra rows or delete extra rows so that my height and my numbers all happen at the same time. And when I split through the sleeves, I don't have to do anything weird. That's the goal. Should I put a gusset in this? Maybe, I think I might be going a little overboard on the gussets, but I kind of want to put a gusset on this. But I won't need it because it's a cardigan. It, you're, even if I'm buttoned, there's, there's ease, there's... No, I'm not putting a gusset in. Stop me. I'm out of control. I don't care. So, either this is going to be a very short episode, um, or I'll take you along and do the math. I, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. You'll know because there'll either be video left or there won't. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you later.